took my mama, got her to the town of Rome. From my boozing friend I so lucky girl From my boozing friend That fool got lucky He's all the back again If you see two women Running nine nine If you see two women Running That was Stole Rider Blues by Blind Willie McTell. We are going to continue on with lessons all this spring on Blind Willie McTell's music. This is all in conjunction with my new ebook release on my website. The Blind Willie McTell Pre War Recordings ebook is now available at deltalumusic.com at our store. All right, so we're continuing in the traditions of folk and ragtime playing. The past two years, we've we've focused a lot on the Delta blues region, Mississippi, rugged slide, dead thumb techniques. Now we're moving into the folk style traditions of the Piedmont areas and, and furthermore. So the best way to transition there is to learn McTell's music, which is highly enigmatic, of highly complex in its own right. All right, so in order to begin, there are some prerequisites in studying McTell's music, which is for the advanced player. But please be sure to uh, watch my beginning finger picking patterns, lessons one through four, as a prerequisite to get the finger picking patterns right, because I will be continuing using these techniques across these lessons. What we need in order in, for this lesson is an acoustic guitar will do. I know that he played a 12 string, uh, but for now let's let's stick with a six string guitar. You can play an acoustic, just not an electric guitar. I like to utilize plastic finger picks. This is just for me uh, easier. Uh, plastic finger picks for my thumb, index, and middle finger. Just easier for me to pluck the strings and it produces a crisper pitch resonates a little bit better with me. I have kind of fragile fingers. All right. And the, the other thing, ideally, if, if you have the ebook with you, it's very easy to follow along. It has uh, laid out everything bit by bit. Every part of the song is laid out in tablature. You have complete lyrics, chord diagrams. Be sure to uh, check that out. The, when I do my lessons, I'm looking at the ebook and I'm following through every page. It's very easy to understand. <clears throat> All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, in, in continuing with Blind Willie McTell's music, if you've watched my Dark Knight Blues video, I, I kind of set it up where we have to focus on McTell's tuning. Now we're focusing on McTell's pre-war recordings, not his Atlanta 12-string album recordings, which he recorded in the late 40s. At that point, his... The, his he tuned his guitar so low that the strings almost fall off the guitar. And it's not, for me, the album that we need to focus on. We want to look at his pre-war recordings. Stole Rider Blues recorded in 1927. So this is the version that we'll be looking at. And in learning McTell's music, you will have to get familiar with down-tuning your, your guitar from E standard down to lower keys like D or C or even lower than that. So for the most part, McTell liked to play, and, and from this selection of songs in this ebook, there are nine songs, McTell is gonna go from E standard down to D standard. So meaning your top string being an E is gonna be down tuned to D. But furthermore, McTell liked to play a semitone up between D and D sharp. So you're right in the middle between those two pitches. So essentially it's like a D plus. 
and I have my guitar tuned to that semitone um, tuning, which is heard in the original recording. My my lessons are aimed to to try to play as close to the original recording as possible, and that is also in terms of tuning as well. So let's tune our guitars together. And the the interest the the thing about Stoll Rider Blues is that not only is it tuned to uh, D standard tuning, but the top string is also dropped. So where you would have drop D tuning when you're playing in E standard, now it's going to be drop C tuning. So the top string is actually going to be down tuned further more. So you're going from an E to a C at the top string. And additionally, that C is going to be tuned a semitone up, so you're in between C and C sharp. So this is the top string in pitch. Please match the pitch on your end. This is a C plus. All right. The next string is going to be a G, a G plus, a semitone up from G. My fourth string is going to be a C, a C plus, a semitone up from C. My next string is going to be an F, an F plus. My second string is going to be an A, an A plus, semitone up from A. And finally, my bottom string is going to be a D plus. So now let's go ahead and play a D major chord. This song is played in the key of D. It sharply resemble, resembles his most famous piece, Statesboro Blues. They're almost identical, Statesboro being a little bit more complicated. Stoll Rider is the easier version, let's say, of Statesboro Blues. And the other uh, song that features in this family of structure and, and composition is Murderer's Home Blues as well. Murderer's Home Blues is tuned to standard F tuning. That means he's down tuned his guitar some four and a five whole steps down. The strings are almost falling off the guitar. And this is the enigmatic stylings of McTell is for some reason he liked to really down tune his guitar which allowed for his voice to sing in octaves a little higher. It, it helped him with his high-pitched voice. I guess the combination worked for him. All right, so now that we have that, we're tuned together, let's play a D major chord. And the top string and the fourth string are gonna be that octave. This is what we want to achieve. It's very important that the top string is dropped because it provides the, the crucial bass accompaniment to follow throughout the song. All right, so moving forward, we need to talk about right hand position. Again, follow through. If you've been following in my lessons, I always talk about the right hand position. The outer lining of the palm of your hand rests over the sixth and fifth strings, your thumb is free and situated atop the fifth string like this and this the thumb is going to be available to pick out the bass accompaniment your index and middle finger are going to play the bottom first second and third strings the treble strings and they're going to play those um, notes individually in conjunction with the thumb working together so you have like a, a pinch pattern the thumb playing the bass and the index and the middle finger playing the individual notes and melodies on the bottom three strings and all of the chordings. So when you have that in conjunction, see what I'm doing here is this conjunction, this mechanism with the finger picking. As a prerequisite to learning these lessons, please watch my lessons one through four beginning finger picking patterns. McTell is for the advanced player. 
All right, so we've talked about the right hand, talked about the proper guitar, finger picks, and most importantly, tuning. Now, I'm, I'm tuning it to the original recording. If you want to go back and play it in E standard and regular tuning, that's fine. I'm just showing you the keys to unlocking McTell's music, which he loved to down, down tune his guitar heavily. All right, so now let's begin to the introduction, and we'll, for, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so now we're going to play the introduction, which, which you'll, what you'll need to do is finger a D major chord, and the pinky is, is free and going to be available to play notes on the, uh, the fourth fret. And I like to play a full D major chord, meaning I have this, the regular D major chord, and with the pinky I'm playing on the fourth string, fourth fret. This is a, a richer version of the D major chord. Full, and I incorporated into all of McTell's music. I even su suspect that McTell is utilizing this additional note. Because the, the pinky also will be available to play these, uh, these specific notes. These kind of pull-off licks while you're holding a D major chord. With the pinky, he does licks on the third string. that a lot. The pinky is going to be very strategic in what you do here. So again, a majority of the song I would say all of the the uh, the, the accompaniments, the uh, compositions that are based on the one chord here, meaning the D major chord, you'll always want to finger and, and play the D major chord as you as you play all of the melodies. Use it, revert to it as a fallback, as your bass. And that's going to be very crucial in playing Stoll Rider Blues. So the, the um, original, the uh, introduction is going to sound like this. He, he's playing a combination of licks and pull-offs all on the D major chord. It's quite simple. So the introduction sounds like this. <laughs> I'll play that one more time. <clears throat> Alright, so what he's doing here in this, if you have the tablature with you, the ebook, we're looking at this first uh, tabbed out portion here. You're going to finger a D major chord, obviously, and the, the first five notes that come on this this from this first measure here will appear like this all right and what he's doing here is he's holding a D major chord the first note is just gonna be uh, a strum of it you can do one downstroke with the thumb or with your index and middle finger flick upwards so you're playing the D major chord fully here once. Then the next note, you're going to take your index finger while sort of holding that D major chord intact, you're going to shift to the uh, bottom string first fret. That's going to be the second note. And then while you're still holding this pattern, the D major chord, with the middle and the third finger, you're going to play the bottom string open. So the first three notes will be this kind of chromatic descent on the fretboard. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And look at what my ring finger is doing. I'm still hanging on to that D major chord. So the first three notes are one, two, and then the final two notes are going to be two strums of the D major chord without playing the bottom string. So it's just the, uh, the third and second strings. So in all, it's like this. One, two, three, four.
Those are the first five notes. And this is also what he's doing in Statesboro Blues. It's this back and forth on this chromatic pull-off combination. <laughs> And the thumb is playing this alternating finger picking pattern on the sixth and fourth strings. All right, so that's kind of what you'll expect to see. So those are the first five notes. One, two, three, four, five. And then you want to play the the top string open, a bass accompaniment that keeps the uh, the tune in timing. So those first five notes occur, and then he does uh, <laughs> a little pull off here. While you're maintaining the D major chord fingering here, he, he fingers this, and with the pinky, you're gonna play this pull off on the third string, fourth fret. All right, and, and so while you're, um, so the next, succession of six notes will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, and that is like this. You, you play the, the D major chord. You're holding the D major chord, but you're with the thumb picking out the third string, second fret. That's what's being played because you're fingering the D major chord. This is the first note. So it's one, and then the pinky comes up, and for that second note, you're playing this kind of pull off on the fourth fret third string. One, two, one, two, one, two. So it's kind of like this boogie woogie, boogie woogie rhythm. So that's two, the second note. And then he pulls off of that, and now your thumb is going, trekking down to the second string while you're holding that full D major chord. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's going to be crucial because this is going to reappear throughout the song. the first three notes and then the next uh, three notes will be uh, sort of ascending on this chromatic instance on the D major chord so before the in the way beginning the the measure before we did a chromatic descent up the fretboard on the D major chord now we're going back into the D major chord the opposite way so the next three notes are going to be uh, you're holding the D major chord, but you're not fingering the uh, bottom string second fret. You're leaving that open, so you play an instance one of that. Then with the index finger, you're going to the first fret bottom string. Then the next note is going to be the bottom string second fret. And with my thumb, I'm playing the D, uh, the D, the open fourth string. I'm pinching together that that thumb it kind of brings up that harmony, makes it harmonic all together in conjunction. So again, those six notes together, the first three being one, two. Then four, five, six. All right. So the from the very beginning in the introduction, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's good to just get familiar with that. 
So again, in this second portion here, what I was talking about, you're fingering the D major chord, you got two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, after that six notes, he is uh, going to play, uh, so the, the next four notes will appear like this. He plays the second and third strings while holding the D major chord to kind of cap off this. One, two, three, four. Playing kind of like a half D major chord. And then he goes back to this lick again while holding a major uh, D chord. This plays this lick again. Plays this lick, and then briefly he goes into this uh, the uh, fifth fret second string. And then finally to the D major chord as a way to cap off the, the kind of licks that are happening here. So I know there's a lot happening here, but think about it as this. You're always, you're always fingering a D major chord and you're letting the pinky play the licks here and then the index finger coming off while you're hanging onto that D major chord to play the notes on the bottom string first and second frets. So think about it like that, the discipline. The D major chord is always going to be that bass. Your index finger is going to come off, and then your pinky is going to play the licks on the third and fourth frets. So for the beginning, the introduction, I'll go really slow. The first five notes sound like this. One, two, three, four, five. So faster, it's like this. Then the, the next part of that will sound like this. While holding the D major chord, it's... And that goes like this. You're fingering the D major chord, you got this, the pinky comes, swoops in to play that third string, fourth fret, come down to the second string, while holding the major uh, D major chord, so the third string, second fret, then this ascending motion on the D major chord. So it's so from this step, it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Part of that is is uh, he goes into the D major chord, then he plays this lick again, and then comes briefly to the uh, fifth fret, second string, and then finally resolves on the D major chord to give it closure. So this sounds and all like this. So in all the introduction, it will, from the beginning, sound like this. Uh, I'll play that again. combinations will reappear throughout the remainder of the song and, and he plays them accordingly uh, there's a lot of improvisation here and in every stanza he does some sort of variation of these licks so 
So just please keep that in mind. D major chord being essential here. <clears throat> so after he plays this beginning combination of um, notes, he then plays a steady strum of D major chords, an alternating finger picking pattern where the, um, the thumb is going to play the top string open and then come play the fourth string open. Along with the fourth string open, he's playing the D major chord, but you're not playing the bottom string. So it's uh, a combination that appears like this. One, two, one, two, three. It's this combination of alternating finger picking pattern strums. So it's a uh, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And that is the introduction. So we've we've covered a lot of ground here, so it's gonna get a lot easier as we continue on. Alright, so now we're gonna look at the first stanza, which is going to reappear in the next three stanzas he's going to proceed with this musical arrangement and it's quite easy so <clears throat> in the portion where he sings I'm gonna grab me a train ride the lonesome rail all he's doing is continuing this finger picking pattern strum on the D major chord which we last left off in the introduction now I like to with the pinky play the fourth string on the fourth fret as a full D major chord how rich that sounds. So in this instance he's playing this finger picking pattern which is like a one in one. Top string followed by the D major chord, you're not playing the bottom string. And in this instance he's going, I'm gonna grab me a train, ride the lonesome rail. I'm gonna grab me a train, Ride the lonesome rail. That's all he's doing here. A simple, simple combination there. But at the end of that measure, he plays quite a few strums on the D major chord. Before he jumps into the fourth position. Alright, and in this portion, he's he kicks it off. What I'm playing here is... Essentially, you're playing uh, two eight notes here on the D major chord. It will be one, two, three, four. 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 So uh, it's actually a sixteenth note followed by two eight notes on the D major chord. So in all, it's going to sound like this. I'm going to ride me a train, ride the lonesome rail. And he continues with that structure in the next two stanzas. Now we're going to go to his, another strategic part of the song, which is the four position, meaning he's going to go from D to G, G7, namely. And in, in order to kick off into this next part of the stanza in the fourth position he, he's transitioning this is the, a key moment here he's going from these D major chords and then he utilizes this mini bass uh, transitionary bass run which sounds like this so it's from D major and then he's going to the fifth string first fret and then going to the second fret fifth string. One, two. And here he's going to play this D, uh, D, G7 chord, but since this is drop, uh, drop tuning, you cannot play the top string because it will not be a true G7. So it's kind of like a half G7. Right, so you're going to play the G7 chord in this instance, <clears throat> and, 
and the way to do this also is this is going to be a kind of a different variation of a G7 chord since it's drop tuning, right? So what you want to do is you want to finger <clears throat> uh, finger the bottom string, first fret. Your middle finger is going to play the second uh, fret, fifth string. And then your pinky finger, this time, is going to finger a second string, third fret. So it's kind of like a hybrid G7, G chord. Right? So that's, that's the chording there. Alright, so that's the next chord. And he kicks off, uh, while he fingers this chord, he starts off with this bass run. Those are the first two notes of that bass chord, and then he locks in this this chording, this position, this fingering, except that he's going to pick out individual notes while holding this G7 hybrid chord, and with the index finger you're going to pick out the individual notes that are uh, extracted from out of this chord. So the uh, the first five notes in this in this sequence will sound like this. I'm going to incorporate the bass run. One, two, then you finger that, that hybrid chord, and with the index finger, you're going to play the second string, third fret. The thumb plays the bass, index finger plays the third fret, second string, and then while maintaining this fingering, the first string, index finger, bottom string will be played open. And then you'll play the first fret bottom string. So those are the fi uh, first five notes there. So it's one, two, you play the second string third fret. Then play the bottom string open, followed by the first fret bottom string. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And then right after he plays that, he plays the um, second fret fifth string. He's letting that bass dictate um, the timing here in this stanza. So the six notes in all would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're maintaining this fingering. Again, it's sort of similar to what I was saying with a D major chord. You have the chord fingered, and then your index is gonna, finger is going to come off to play notes, and your pinky is going to come off to play notes. Well, that's exactly what's happening here with this G7, G chord. The index finger, and then the, the pinky. Are free to move. So the first six notes are one, two, three, four, five, six. And after he plays that sixth note, he plays one sharp stroke on the bottom three strings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He plays that, that chord one. So it's I'm gonna grab me a train I'm gonna grab me a train I'm gonna grab me a train One, two, three, four, five, six, seven And then the, the other half of that is uh, gonna sound like this Ride the lonesome rail So maintaining this fingering, the second portion is going to consist of seven notes. You're going to play the bass note again here, the second fret fifth string. And now you're going to play the bottom string first fret. Then you're going to take the index finger and pull off, play that open now. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Then with the pinky, 
still holding this note on the third fret, third string, uh, second string. You take the index finger and you pluck once there. So in all, it's one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Right the alone, right the alone. Then you play the second string open. Take the pinky off for that fifth note. So it's one, two. And then follow that by the uh, second fret third string, which he will say rail. And that sounds like altogether it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Capped off with the open string on the fifth string. And that sounds like uh, it will sound like this. So again, it's the same concept. The index finger coming off and the pinky finger playing the respective notes on the first and the third fret uh, strategically. So all in all, the, this fourth position of the song incorporates this G, G7, G chord. And it will sound uh, all together like this. I'll play it from the uh, from the previous part. I'm running a train, running lonesome rail. I'm running a train, running lonesome rail. I'll go a lot slower here. I'm gonna grab me a train. So that's the, the, the G chord, the, the fourth position of the song, which he will repeat throughout most of the stanzas. A little bit later on, he does a different variation of, the, of a G chord over the third, fourth, and fifth frets. But for the most part, this is where he's going to revert to. All right. So uh, we will uh, continue on there. So that's the fourth position. And then right after he comes off that, when you play this open string, he plays this little lick on the D major chord immediately after he follows this four position. And it'll sound like this. I'll play that again. So it, tying it together, it'll sound like this. Gonna go around the He's always incorporating this lick off the D major chord. So in this figure here, if you have the tablature with you, is again, he's fingering the D major chord and he's playing this leading into the D major chord first by playing the bottom string open. So the first three notes will be you finger the D major chord, your, uh, your middle finger is coming off and you're playing the bottom string open this time. <laughs> So that's the first note, and then the index finger comes off, and now you're playing, the second note will be the first fret bottom string, and then you're sliding into the second fret bottom string. One, two, three, and the thumb is playing this four string. So those are the first three notes. And then the fourth note is just a simple, quick play on the D major chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
and then the the second part of that is this lick on the third string fourth fret so he plays this lick play the D major chord the pinky comes swoops hits the third string fourth fret and then you play the second string twice one two three four so in all it's measure and then in the next instance he does a real quick pull off lick on the D major chord which will sound like this and then again he's fingering the D major chord and in this instance he plays a quick pull off lick on the bottom string first fret pull off to play that open string one two and then while holding the D major chord, you take the index finger and you pluck the third fret uh, second string. One, two, three. And then you play the top string open. One, two, three, four. And then strike the D major chord. So this instance will be broken down like this. tends to do this uh, several times in the song as well. So it's another key lick to feature from this composition. So now we're going to move on to the 5 position, which is going to be uh, pretty complicated in its own right. Alright, so now we're going to look at the, the signature 5 position of the song, which also features in Statesboro Blues, and it's the portion that sounds like this. This is the part where he sings, Joe stole my baby, I'm in the lonesome jail. Alright, a very important feature in this song. So, uh, what he's playing here in this instance is, is actually an F chord. So, you, what you would do is you would finger what you would have with a regular D major chord. But now you're going to shift, maintaining the same fingering, and you're going to hold it over the 5th and 6th fret. Play like this. This is a variation of an F major chord. And you're going to play 4 strums here. And in the 3rd strum, the pinky is going to uh, pop up to play the bottom string on the 7th fret. This is kind of like an F7 chord. Six, something like that. So the first four notes of this combination is you, you finger it and you're going to play two strums. One, two. And then in the third sequence you'll play this F7 chord. And you're going to pinch the bottom string on the seventh fret. So it's one, two, three. And then pull off that pinky and play that F major chord once more. So the combination is four, four strums here. One, two, three, four. Jo Joker stole my baby. Joker stole my baby. Joker stole my Very easy and straightforward there. He also plays that in Statesboro Blues. Um, Have you had the nerve to drive Papa Mertel from his door? That's from Statesboro Blues. So in the other half of this is this signature bass rundown on the fifth string. And it's going to consist of five notes in all. You're going to start it off like this. It'll sound like this. <laughs> And what you're going to do is locate the 2nd fret 5th string, play that, 
then go to the adjacent chord, the first fret, play that on the fifth string, first fret, then play the fifth string open, and then look, tick up to the third fret, sixth string, and bend, and then play open, open string on the sixth string, or the fourth string, or resolve on a D major chord. So in all, it'll be like this. She's in the lonesome jail. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. So that's pretty straightforward and simple there. So he plays that position, and then immediately afterwards, he plays usually some kind of combination lick. Um, here he plays, which is exactly what we learned before this five position was that lick that followed after the four position, those those G seven G hybrid chords. So that's what he's doing again here, as he's injecting these licks after the five position here, and that's again it's one two three four five six. Seven, eight. And, and that's an, an absolute repeat of what we just went over, so I'm not going to spend time there. All right, so moving forward, he goes into the next stanza, which uh, again is, He took my mama, got into the town. Continuing on there, we're repeating the same concepts. In this stanza, it's this back and forth. You're playing this full, full version of the D major chord. It's not tabbed out like that, but I like to incorporate playing that additional note, that richer D major chord. It sounds beautiful. It tells music. Then to that G chord. Right? Get into the town of Rome. All right, and now we're going to continue on across the other stanzas and investigate deeply what's going on there as well. All right, so now we're focusing on the uh, the stanza where he's singing. He took my mama get into the town of Rome. And after he follows after this four position, he always plays some sort of variation of the licks happening on the D major chord. So in this instance, he's uh, repeating some concepts here, which we already went over. And uh, in this instance, it will sound like this. He plays that, this, this figure twice. And again, it's it's playing this D major chord. You're playing the open string and the bottom string, leading into it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then playing this lick on the on the fourth fret, third string. And then um, at the end there, he just plays this as a, as a combination of four strums. You're holding the D major chord, and you're going to play this um, triplet combination with the index and middle finger. You're going to play the bottom string, then with the middle finger. You're gonna pl pl uh, pluck the third fret second string, then back to the second fret bottom string. Then you're gonna play the D major chord fully here. So in all, th this sequence will be like this.
that caps off the measure there. And he, he comes back to this sequence on the D, D chord again. Then in the four, f uh, five chord position, he will he'll, uh, sing, Now the screaming and crying little papa put your bum back home. Now she's screaming and crying, Papa, let your mama come back home. Go back to the five position. Again, it's the same sequence. But I'll play it a little bit slower so you can get the voicings right. So he's saying, Now she's screaming and crying, Papa, let your mama come back home. Followed by more licks on the D major chord. And in this installation, he's sitting on the D major chord and he's playing quite a few licks here. And again, he, he, he starts off in this lick. I'll play the whole sequence here like this. Uh, let's try, let me try it again. One more time. all over the place with this D major chord. So again, in this sequence, he kicks off this combination. He starts off with that. So we've already covered that. Then he's gonna go back into this lick, which is you're holding the D major chord and with the index finger, you're playing this pull off combination, combination of three notes in all. The index finger comes and plays the bottom string first fret. Then you pull off, play the open string. And, and so it pr produces this, um, this function here. The thumb is going to play the, the uh, fourth string open. And the index finger is going to play the notes on the first string, bottom string. And the, and the index finger is then also going to play the third fret second string. So he plays that uh, twice in this instance. So it'll sound like this. One, one two, three, four, five, six. So the, the beginning of that is. And then the next instance here is. He'll, he'll play this D major chord and it'll sound like this. Plays this lick. Then he briefly goes into the um, second string fifth fret. And then back to the D major chord. It has this nice resolution. The lick. And that's that portion. So the first part of this is that's that first part. Then he goes back into this lick again. And then the, the second part of this lick, and it's nicely laid out here on the tablature, he does this. And this is different now from what we've studied before. So this is something like typical out of Statesboro blues. So again, it's this, it's this ascent and descent, descent on the um, the D major chord with the index finger freeing itself up to play this chromatic wind up on the open first second frets on the bottom string. And so this instance will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, and then six on the D major chord. So again, you, your finger in the D major chord, get that middle finger off so the bottom string is free. Index finger comes to play the first fret bottom string. 
then to the second fret bottom string. One, two, three. Then go back where you came from. So it's four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then six on the D major chord. Don't play the bottom string. And then you play the play one more one more strike of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he finishes off with this D major chord, this quick combination of triplets. So you play the, the bottom string, then the second string, and then the full chord. And again, the, uh, pay attention to the, the bass accompaniment. So that's a quite an extensive combination and arrays of pull-offs and licks, all based on the D major chord. And in this song, McTell is choosing to uh, improvise at at the end of um, when the stanzas roll out and the verses. He always comes back into this D major chord and he's playing a, a variety of combination of licks. For you as the learner, it's up to you if you want it. You, you can pick and choose from this arsenal of licks and pull-offs and combinations on the D major chord. But knowing in this song, try to play along with Statesboro Blues and see if you can put it together. They're both in the same family of keys and they're also tuned in the same pitch. Alright, so um, the third stanza will now revert back to this, again, this sequence on the D major chord. I stole my good hymn from my blues and friend I stole my good gal from my blues and friend Stole my good gal to this G7 blues and friend Alright, and then after he plays that he goes back to this lick on the D major chord and then he plays that quick lick again here and then he plays this D major chord there so in this little sequence here it's also laid nicely out in the tablature here this sequence now after he plays this I stole my good girl from my booze and friend That's how that sounds, and again, it's this, this, uh, this lick that he always comes back to. Followed by this lick. The, um, uh, you're holding the D major chord and the index finger is playing this quick uh, lick off the first fret bottom string, then open back to the second string, third fret. That, that he plays there, followed by the D major chord, and then this triplet combination on the D major chord. You play the bottom string, then the second string, then the bottom string. One, two, three, one, two, three. And usually when he plays this combination of triplet notes, it's ending, ending the sequence, ending the measure. So he does all of his licks in the beginning. And he ends on the D major chord there. So then, carrying on to the end of the Santa, he'll play That fool that lucky, he stole it back again. And again, it's that those four strum, strum combinations on the F chord. That fool that lucky, he stole it back again. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, he plays that combination, and uh, we'll we'll move forward to the next installation of stanzas.
Yeah, so we uh, we played this from the last sequence. That fool got lucky, he stole it back again. And then it naturally comes back to these licks on the D major chord, and in this instance it will sound like this. It's a little bit quicker here, so it's this go-to lick, followed by this quick lick on the D major chord, and then end on the D major chord. All right, so we've covered the first three stanzas, the very signature licks coming out of the D major chord. A wealth of information for you to study. Now. It's going to get a little bit trickier and more difficult as the song continues because now McTell is doing things, uh, but he, he breaks into a, a different transition of the song, playing a different styling of the D major chord. Now naturally we're, we're here on the first position, we're playing here, but now he's going to shift over and play the long uh, chords, the long variations of chords. <laughs> of the D major and D7 chord. <clears throat> and so this is going to be very crucial and it's laid out nicely here on this chord diagram, but it's going to be very imperative that we have to get the, the fingering right in order to execute this. So in this next installation, the fourth stanza, he, um, uh, he, he plays uh, this quick instrumental break which will cap off like this. <laughs> So-and-so. Alright, do it so do it with a feeling. So that's what he's doing there. Uh, it's gonna be a, a very tricky to implement this, but I'll play it again. So we're going to talk about the instance here, what's happening on the long D and D7 chord. Now this is McTell, a signature chord combination of McTell's work. Signature meaning this reappears over and over, not only in this, in this key of D, but also in the key of E as well. And this is, this is pivotal pivotal to learn. So in order to kick off these combinations, what you're gonna do is after he plays this lick from the previous stanza, he's gonna lock into these long D and D7 chords first by playing in combination with three notes. He's gonna take the uh, uh, second the uh, fifth string first fret, you're gonna play that, and you're gonna slide it all the way to the seventh fret, seventh fret fifth string. And then you're gonna play the open string fourth string. And that's gonna lock in these long D and D seven chords. And in order to play the long D and D seven chords, you have to pay attention here, this is very crucial. You're going to take your index finger and you're going to bar the uh, the seventh fret from the fourth string down. So meaning the index finger is going to fret the fourth, third, second, and first strings. Right? The index finger is going to do that, and then the the pinky is going to be available. the The uh, middle and the pinky finger are going to be available to play corresponding notes according to how the melody. Is, uh, is ushered out here. So this, the D major chord here in the long position, you're gonna have this fretted and then the pinky is going to play the 10th fret bottom string. 
So this is going to be a D major. And then with the, um, the fifth string, the top two strings, you have this bass accompaniment. So that's the D major, long D major. And then with your middle finger, you're going to hover and play the bottom string on the eighth fret, which makes it now a D7. Your middle finger and your pinky are going to do all of the action here. Long D, long D7. So he uh, locks into this position. One, two, three. And then right away he plays the long D major chord twice. Followed by a, a, a strum on the fifth string open. Or the sixth and fifth strings together. The, the bass accompaniment is, is always going to be key here in its implementation. So you, you lock it in, you play two strums of the D major chord, one, two, and then here it's going to get a little bit tricky with the index and the middle finger on the right hand, you're going to be picking out these, uh, these note combinations here all happening while you're barring this D major chord. Again, notice that McTell is playing a chord and then with the index and the pinky finger is playing additional licks based out of that. The, the chord is hanging on, but the pinky and the middle, fing uh, yeah, the middle finger are going to play the notes respectively. So this, this sequence comes about next. And it'll sound like this. That's a signature McTell lick, if I've ever heard one. All right, and that's a, uh, I get my hand is cramping up here. Ow. Uh, so <laughs> there's a combination of eight notes here and we'll go one by one. So again, having this bar fingering is crucial. You always have to have your index finger is always going to be barred. It will never leave. It will always remain stationary. And your middle and pinky finger are going to do all the work. So in, the, in this portion of eight notes here, the first three notes are going to be focusing, while maintaining this position, you're going to be playing the notes on the bottom string, namely. So he starts off with the D major chord here, the long D major chord. This is the first note of this. Then the middle finger is going to play the 8th fret bottom string while you're barring this. Then that middle finger is going to come off and you're going to just play the 7th fret barred. So it's 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. And then you're going to shift your attention and focus up one string on the 2nd string and you're gonna play the same combination of notes this time on the second string. So maintaining this bar, of course, the pinky now shifts up to the second string and now you're gonna play the next three notes which are gonna be on the 10th um, the fret, second string. Then you're gonna to go to the eighth fret, second string. And then play the second string on the seventh fret while maintaining this bar position. So the first six notes will be like this. One, two, three. Then the pinky comes up. And then the middle finger plays the eighth fret. And then come off of that. So it's a combination of six notes here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so those are the first six notes and then you're going to tick up and play the third string, seventh fret, as a way to kind of end that sequence. So uh, the seven notes in all will be like this, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. The third string, seventh fret. And then the eighth note will be the D major chord, the long D. A strum of that. So in all the eight notes will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very, once you got it locked in, it will, it will be good to go. Again, the index finger is always barring the seventh fret. The pinky and the middle finger are doing all of the action. You're never going to play anything on the ninth fret here. It's always going to be seventh, eighth, and tenth frets. Okay, so that's what he's doing there in that sequence. And then he continues to play this kind of bass combination, playing the top string and then the uh, seventh fret fourth string. Do it good, Mr. So and so. Do it good, Mr. So and so is when he starts speaking. And then he, he comes back to that lick one more time, except in this installation, he he starts off on the 8th fret, 2nd string, before he plays that 8 note combo again. So from the beginning it's this, uh, from the way beginning it's... This is how that goes out. So. In this poor after this portion, do it good, Mr. So and So. Again, he's leading into this lick first by going to the second string eighth fret. this combination again and again going back to that 8th fret 2nd string as a way to kick in these licks on the long D and D7 chord alright so he, he plays that lick once more so he plays that this kind of lick this combination of 8 notes plays that around three times. Do it with a feeling. All right, and then the... So when, when he plays this combination here, it's uh, this... So you're gonna, now it's gonna change change gears here. So now leading with this third string 7th fret, he's now going to shift and play this sequence. And here it's going to be just playing uh, back and forth between the D and the D7 long chords here. So in this installation now it will sound like this. So it's maintaining the bar position, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what he's doing here is he's maintaining the bar position. The first note in this sequence is going to be the second string, seventh fret. Then you're going to play the bottom string, seventh fret, just by itself. Now the middle and the pinky finger are going to come into action here. The next note is going to be this D7 chord then the pinky's gonna play this D chord. And then play that one more time, back to the D7, and then D7 again. So in all, th this whole sequence here will be
instance is just a, a back and forth between the D7 there. And then he continues, do it good now. Back to this lick once more. He, he plays that again. He loves coming back to that. So, again, it's just is also listening to the original recording is also crucial in getting it down. It's kind of straightforward and easy. At, at first it comes across as pretty intimidating when you're playing down here over in the 7th and 10th frets, but it, it, it starts to make sense. And again, this is going to feature in a lot of his work. So when you continue to listen to McTell, look out for it. You're, you're going to know exactly where he's playing. Now continuing on further in this measure, he starts to sing this kind of the, he's already now locked into the lyrics of the stanza where he's not speaking, he's singing. And he in this portion it's this, it's gonna be a combination where you're you're holding this this bar position, the D major chord, and the thumb is gonna play the top string and then the fourth string. Now the woman I got a my track full of good gold. Now the woman I got a my track Full of good gold. And here it's this it's this combination is played loosely. You can kind of barely hear the music being played in the background. His voice has the more pronounced effect here at this juncture of the song. So and in this portion it's this back and forth. Now the woman I got got a mouth chock full of good gold. He plays the, the D major chord here once, the D major chord, then the D7 chord. Now the woman I got, got a mouth chunk full of good gold. So this is the part that's it's pretty fluid. This, there's no kind of set. Uh, note for note here here it's just more like a uh, a heavy uh, combination of strums here so continuing on further it's got a, now the woman I got got a mouth shock full of good gold and then he he plays more combinations here in the position moving forward and it will it will now feature like this Again, it's uh, to kick off this sequence. The first three uh, parts here will be a strum of the D major chord, followed by two strums of the D7 chord. One, two, three. One, two, three. Followed by this lick. And again, he leads into this lick by playing the second string, eighth fret. And then playing the remainder of that, those seven notes that appear like this. And then that's all followed by this uh, D major chord, D7 chord. And then you end on the D7 chord. The final four notes of that sequence are D major, D7, now the 10th fret 2nd string, followed by the D7 chord. D major, D7, 2nd string, 10th fret, and then D7. And uh, so that sequence here will sound like this. So we got that a lot, a lot happening here, but this is going to play well as we continue to learn more songs. Drive Away Blues is also another song that features out of this ebook, and we're going to be playing similar combinations there. So it's good to get it down pat this time around and continuing on. So he plays all of those combinations here, and then he goes back to this G7 hybrid chord. 
Now the one I got got a mountain truck full of good gold. All right, so we, we, we're down to that. And uh, we'll continue on here. Yeah, so it's my one I got. I got a mountain truck full of good gold. And then this next sequence, he always follows with a, a variation of licks on the D major chord. And here it will sound like this. Here it, it's a little bit different. Again, it's playing this lick first, followed by this quick lick. Then you play the D major chord a little bit, and then you pull out this combination, which we already discussed before. And then you follow, followed by this triplet on the D major chord which always ends all of these measures. Then to the five position. Every time she hug and kiss me, it make my blood run gold. Followed by this like. All right. So now we're gonna get into even more complicated stuff and the installation of the fifth uh, stanza here. And he's gonna be playing a different variation of the D, G major chord, G major and G7 chord. All right, so for the fifth stanza, he's gonna play something a little bit different here. He's not gonna play in the, uh, the D major chord, he's actually gonna go right to the fourth position and play a variation of the G chord here. So, uh, in the past, we've talked about playing the, the half F chord, not barring it, but playing it like this, the smaller F chord. Well, we're going to do that here for the, the G chord. So, your index finger is going to bar the second and first strings on the third fret. Your middle finger is going to play the uh, third string fourth fret. And then your uh, ring finger is going to play the fourth string fifth fret. So this G right here. And also, the pinky is going to be available to play uh, the note on the uh, fifth fret second string, making it a G6. That's what he's going to do here. So that's those are the chords to follow. So in this fifth stanza, it'll sound like this: When you see the In this sequence, again, he's leading off with this G7 bass kick in. When you... And he right away locks into this G major chord. And you're play, going to be playing like a finger picking combination. So the, the by, while holding this G major chord, this half chord here, you're going to play the with the index finger this... Play the, the chord here. And then... You'll play a, a combination of uh, finger picking strums here. So you, the, in the sequence of four notes here, you play the G chord, and then play the. Uh, you pick out the individual notes on the second string, third fret, followed by the fourth fret, third string, and back to the uh, second string, third fret. So in all, it's like this: one, two, three, four. playing this kind of finger picking pattern when you see three women running in uh, so he, he plays this running see, see three women running hand, hand, hand. and that's
that's going to be the tricky part here. So in that next installation, it's when you see three women running. And then the part where he says hand in hand, he takes the pinky finger and he's going to play the second string fifth fret. Play that G6. When you see three women running. And when he plays that once, he slides over to the A6 chord. See three women running hand in hand. Goes into his A6 and then slides back to the G6. And then when he says hand, he plays a D major chord. So it's when you see three women running hand in hand. See three women running hand in hand. And then when he plays that D chord, he, he when he plays that D chord, he plays this combination of notes. Which uh, there's there's five notes here, and he plays the uh, second string, third fret, followed by this open string on the bottom string, first string, then the first fret, bottom string, second string, bottom uh, second fret, <laughs> second fret, bottom string, back to the second string, third fret. One, two, three, four. Again, maintaining that D major chord positioning. So those five notes follow right after that. So from the beginning it's when you see the wind running hand in hand. So he plays those five notes and then he's gonna play uh, a half of a D7 chord which will make it end up being an A minor at 11. To do that, you're going to uh, position your index finger on the second string first fret, your middle finger on the second string, uh, the second fret third string, and then the bottom string is open. So it's like an A minor, half of an A minor chord. A minor at 11. And then it just gets. Uh, injected here at the end of this measure. So from the beginning how it all uh, brings out is when you see three women running hand in So he plays this installation here and it's a succession of four notes. You play the um, the uh, Play the chord without playing the bottom string. Then you play the bottom string once. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's that A minor 11 chord. And it follows right after this portion. That's that, the presence of that A minor at 11 chord. And that's actually what he does in Statesboro Blues as well. Uh, Wake up, mama, turn your lamp down low. Do you ever to drive ever? So that appears.
appears there too. So if you wanted to uh, test your shot at uh, Statesboro Blues, this is kind of in the same same inkling. All right. So moving on forward, he he plays this this combination. When you see the women. This time around, he goes back to his typical licks on the D major chord, and in this instance, it will sound like this. And he's using one of these, followed by this triplet succession on the D major chord. Is what he's doing there, and then he goes back to the typical five position. Bet you my legs fell on one done slowly up with a man. Followed by that lick. He's always going to, after the five position, he's always going to come through with more licks on the D major chord. And once you listen to the original recording, it will just pop and you'll know exactly what he's doing. So again, I'm 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 basing this all off this ebook. I have all of the tablature laid out. It's very easy to follow along, and if you haven't already, check out the link in the information settings. So we're going to continue on. There's another interesting combination that McTell does here in a brief instrumental within the song. So we'll go over that, and we'll we'll be soon finished. Okay. So further on in the song, McTell. Uh, between one of the stanzas plays a little instrumental break and uh, it's it's going to build off of what we learn on this alternate G, G chord it's, it's kind of using that same opening uh, the break sounds like this is you'll you'll play you'll kick in with this bass combination based on the G7 hybrid chord. You go to the G major chord and you start playing this with this four stroke combination. And then the other half of this is going to be a combination here of seven notes and it will it'll sound like this. And so, while holding this D major chord, you're going to have the index finger pick out the notes on the second string. That's why this, what, I, what it's the most important note out of this combination is the note being played on the 6th fret 2nd string is the uh, key different, uh, difference between the previous chord combinations that we had. So he's, he's going to play kind of like a double stop here while holding this chord. The thumb is going to play the fourth string and the index finger is going to play the second string. And in this seven note combination, he's going to start with this. <clears throat> okay, he's going to start with this uh, G6 chord. And this combo will sound like this. And so you play the, the G6 combination, that's the first note, and then the, the pinky is going to slide over while maintaining this fingering chord position on the G chord. The, the pinky is going to slide over to the 6th fret 2nd string, making it a, a 7, G7. Alright, so it's 1, 2, then back to the 5th fret, the G6 chord, 1, 2, 3, then take the pinky off to play the G major, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, then back to the G6 chord, followed by the, the G7, 
as the next. So the first six notes are one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, it's, you're playing this kind of double stop combination and then the index finger is plucking on the second fret. So the, the six notes are followed by that D major chord. You can play the second and third strings with the index finger. So he, he plays that, that sequence there, which is different. And then he goes back into the licks and the D major chord right after that. So again, it's this famous lick, followed by this Statesboro Blues kind of lick. Afterwards, then resolve always on this triplet succession on the D major chord and that measure. And then, so for the next stanza, he then sings, and he goes, I'm, I'm leaving town, please don't spread the news. I'm leaving town, please don't spread the news. He's again going back, reverting back to that, that alternate variation of G chord. I'm leaving town. Forward. And then another lick uh, obviously follows after after that. So the lick on the D major chord, and he's and he's sitting on the D major chord here, playing these triplet combinations. He actually sits sits on it a little bit longer here. So uh, the two parts of this portion are. sitting on that one two three four five six seven kind of a steady strum on the D major chord but again you're just kind of injecting the the licks that's what McTell is doing is going all right I'm gonna roll with this lick this time around all right next stanza finish there all right I'm gonna roll with this lick I'm gonna play this twice so you're just kind of matching the licks as you're listening to the original recording. Now, for the five position, uh, five position in the stanza, it's again reverting back to what we already know. That's why I've got these old Stolberider blues. Back to this famous lick. To the triplet. And then for the final uh, final cap off to this song, he's he's now taking the complicated portions. He he finds himself uh, over on the uh, the long D and the D seven chords, and uh, he'll play the this sequence here. Uh, he'll he'll kick it off like that, of course. playing uh, combinations there and in this part he's not singing anymore this is kind of leading to the end of the song so again it's he starts off with this two D major chords this is something we already looked at goes back to this he goes back to that unique lick 
on the G chord, that special G chord which we discussed in the previous instrumental break, he goes back to that. So the ear will be able to pick out what he's doing. And he actually pay, plays this portion. He plays that twice. And then this is all followed by the D major chord, more licks, which will appear like this. So again, it's this famous lick. Followed by this Statesboro Blues lick. Then followed by these triplets of the D major chord. Then, uh, actually I guess he does still sing here. He, uh, he says, I'm leaving. Actually, <laughs> that, that's incorrect. Um, I was looking at an old page, sorry. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we'll, we'll talk about the, the final uh, portion of the song uh, to follow. Okay, so recapping off at this kind of ending final sequence, he plays this. <laughs> that once and then he plays this lick um, plays this quick lick followed by this triplet of notes and then the final portion of the song is going back to this five position He plays it a little bit, a little bit different here. It's gonna be instead of this, he plays the uh, the ending sequence here like this, and so it's it. You're gonna play a combination of six notes here. You're gonna play the uh, fifth string second fret with the thumb, and then the thumb is gonna trek down to the third string open. So you're gonna play the 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 fifth the fifth string second fret followed by the third string open then you go to the first fret fifth string and then play the third string open then the fifth string open and then the third string open again so it's one two three four five six and then you end the sixth note on it play the top two strings there. As the end. So, that is Stole Rider Blues. And we've covered a lot of ground here, but those are very intricate and specific licks that McTell utilizes here, all in the key of D. So you're looking at D, G7, G6, and then recycling, he, he's all over the place. So you have enough to build upon, and it's also going to help you in learning his other songs. So moving on to Drive Away Blues, it will appear there, these kind of notes on the long, long E. It will start to get more familiar. So this is an excellent song to kind of break the ice with McTell's learning. So once again, thanks, thank you very much for following along. Again, definitely check out the ebook that goes along with this lesson. It's available at the store, the Delta Lou Music Store. Uh, it's one of my crown jewels of ebooks, this McTell. This is the best ebook I've ever written. It's definitely a must see. So again, I'm signing off. Uh, Please be sure to subscribe, follow me on Facebook to get continuous coverage and fulfilling my mission in saving this music. Thanks again.